Welcome to today's sew along. I'm going to be making the Huan shirt today with long sleeves. So I have my pieces cut out here. Um, I just wanted to show you I have this is the back panel. I have two back yoke pieces. I have a pair of fronts. I have the long sleeve pieces. I haven't cut the slit for the placket just yet. I'll cut that just before I do the placket. Um, I have my cuff pieces and I've already um, fused the interfacing to them. So I'm using a woven fusible interfacing here you can use whatever you like, um, just match it to your fabric. So um, I fused it so that the edge here aligns with the fold line, which is marked on the pattern piece. Um, so yeah. I've also fused the button placket. Again, aligning um, this edge with the fold line. I've been pretty careful to try and get a really clean edge there because that's going to help me when I, when I fold my placket in half. I have my two collar pieces. So one of them I've fused with the um, interfacing piece and the other one I haven't. Whenever I have something on a curve like this, I'm just really careful to handle it um, gently. I don't want to stretch it out of shape. This is quite a stable fabric. This is a stable cotton lawn. Um, then I have my um, bias pieces to make the rollo loops and somewhere I also have a strip to make my um, continuous lap plackets for the sleeve. I've also got my iron switched on and I did some testing um, with the fabric, I wanted to just ensure that my um, tension and everything was correct. I'm just going to try and get it to focus there. Um, and it is. So I just um, had a little play with the tension. Actually, what happened at first was um, the I was using an older needle or a needle that I'd already used on another project. And um, the thread was breaking, so I just changed it out. This is a pretty fine fabric. Um, it's a, f a lovely cotton lawn. So I'm actually going to, I changed it out to a 70. I know that some people change their needles for every project. I don't, but then I tend to use my industrial machine and the needles, honestly, they're designed for like longer use than a domestic machine. So um, you'll get to know, you'll get to know your own sewing machine. Um, I'm going to use a serger or an overlocker through this um, sew along, but if you don't have one, then I would suggest every time I say, you know, uh, overlock or serge the, the edges or finish them, then um, I would use a zigzag stitch on my machine just right at the very edge. So just you'd run the zigzag right along the edge of your work. I don't, um, oh, for this particular pattern, um, I don't recommend using French seams. They just don't work with the method that we're going to use for the setting in the sleeve. So just a word of warning, that's not going to work. Um, yes. So anyway, um, the first thing that you're going to do is um, stay stitch the top edges of the neckline. So what stay stitching does is it just keeps things nice and stable. Um, so here's my back yoke. So stay stitching means that you're just going to sew a row of stitching close to the edge, like a quarter inch or six millimeters in from the edge, and that just stops it from stretching out. Do it on both of the yoke pieces and also on the front piece. Make sure you do the straight stitch and don't serge it or overlock it. You don't need to finish the edges, you don't ever need to finish the edges of your cut out pieces unless instructed. Um, so you can do that. I'm actually not going to do it on this. Um, that's because 
I know how to handle my fabric a little bit gently and also this particular fabric is quite stable and because for the sew along I want it to be really clear for you so you can see which row of stitching I'm talking about rather than getting fused, confused with like many many different rows so that's how we're going to do that. Okay. The nice thing about this pattern is that you can do the buttonholes first. So you're going to do those before you've done basically anything else before we've attached the button placket. So that's really nice. Um, I'm going to take my button placket and I've got it interfaced already. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press that in half. Um, there's some notches for you to help press. It's basically just pressing it in half down the middle. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll be back. So your eyes are not deceiving you. It has changed color. So <laughs> I originally cut um, the button placket in the fashion fabric and then, you know, I was thinking about it and I realized that it was going to probably show through so just have a, a cuff piece here to show you. Um, I decided that the pattern might show through the front of my shirt. Can you see how? You might not be able to see that. So this is the placket. See how you can just see that through there? Anyway, I didn't want that. So I cut a new piece in some plain white fabric. So if your fabric is totally opaque, that's not going to be an issue. Um, I just happen to have a fairly... Um, uh, I think it's just that it's white and a bit thin, not that it's sheer, but anyway, um, you might have that issue. So I also have my button placket piece here. Now you'll notice, so this is the line that you would, um, cut it off at for the shirt. I have a really long torso, so I've actually made it two inches longer. This button placket is going to go on the right hand side of your body. And um, this is going, the um, raw edge is going to be towards the right hand side. So if you hold it up to your body and think about this raw edge, that's going to be facing this way. Um, that is going to be the top. You want the folded edge to be towards the center. And I want the um, interfacing to be uppermost so it's going to be furthest out that's just to make the buttonholes the most stable they can be if you do it the other way around it's not going to really matter but just for argument's sake um, so I have my pattern piece here and I'm going to mark my buttonhole placement so I've already folded it in half you can fold it in half if you like um, so let's do that so I'm folding it in half just in the same way that I folded um, the piece, the pattern piece. Okay, this is so I can mark my buttonholes. So my buttonholes are going to run down the center front and we made a center front notch here. I'm actually going to flip this piece over and I'm going to mark it from the back. That's because, well, I can easily transfer the markings to the front if I want to, but my um, sewing machine actually likes making buttonholes from the back side a little bit better. So I'm matching up this folded edge with this folded edge. And what I'm going to do is just um, stick a pin through at the top of each buttonhole. If you have a way that you prefer to do buttonholes, then by all means, like prefer, prefer to mark them. Like some people like a tracing wheel or something, then go ahead and do that, of course. You don't have to do it this way. Um, this last buttonhole that says this button dress only <laughs> is um, 
if you're cutting it off at the shirt line, this one, this buttonhole would be too low down. Um, so you would normally not use that one because I've cut mine. Um, actually, no, I am gonna. I'm gonna leave that one off as well. Sorry, <laughs> I was thinking about doing it, but I'm not. And then I'm just going to actually pull the the um, pin heads through the pattern piece. I'm making a hole in my pattern piece, so that might not be okay with you. The other thing you can do is um, take another pin. Whoops, flip it back so you can see where that that pin is in and I'm just going to replace it with another pin. You can do that too, that's fine. Oops, I think I lost that one, but I can see where it was. Normally I'd have it down on the, down flat on the table, but I'm trying to show you. So, whoops, I can see where the pin hole was, so I'm just going to stick it through. And then this top one, I can't see, so I'm going to just Mark it on there, pull it through, okay. So I have my buttonholes marked, at, the, at least the top edge of the buttonhole, and then each of my buttonholes, so your machine might do this differently, mine's got a completely manual buttonhole function, so I'm going to make my um, openings about 17, maybe 18 millimeters um, long. Um, it's usually the button, like the diameter of the button plus the height of the button on both sides. So I'm using very thin buttons, so I'm gonna err on the side of smaller. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make my buttonholes on this right now. So just separately, if it messes up, you can just do a completely, cut it completely new, um, button placket, which is kind of nice. So it's a no stress <laughs> buttonhole. Okay, I have made my buttonholes. Yay, no disasters. Um, but if you did have a disaster, don't worry about it. Um, just cut some, cut another button placket and do it again. Um, you can do it as many times as you want and it's nice because this doesn't actually take up very much fabric. Um, now these are my front pieces and I've laid them out this kind of weird way with the neckline at the top So it's like I were wearing it because I need to determine which is the right side and which is the left side So if I were wearing it with the right side out, right? This would be the right hand side and that would button over the left hand side So I'm going to take this piece the right hand piece The top of the buttonhole placket, the buttonhole placket is the one that has um, the button that's the closest to the top. There we go. So I'm going to put this right sides together and I'm going to pin that to the center front. I'm just going to turn this around somehow. I think this is the best way so you can see it. So that's still the neckline. I'm going to pin it here. I'm going to match these edges. There's a notch here for the fold line. This notch will not match up with that folded edge and if it does then there's been an error somewhere. I'm just going to pop some pins in lining up that raw edge. So you should have like three raw edges on top of each other. Oops, that last buttonhole's a bit wonky, isn't it? I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see. Anyway, all the rest of them are super straight. This one's a little bit on an angle, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it's hidden. And that's not going to bother me, so I'm cool with that. Then you get to the bottom and you're like, oh no, the button placket is too short. But that's on purpose. <laughs> um, that's because um, after we flip it round, we're going to turn the hem up and we don't want like button placket and hem and this fabric 
it'll be too bulky, so. Um, okay, so now we're gonna sew the button placket to the front using a one centimeter seam allowance or three eighths of an inch down this, these raw edges. So just sew that together. So I've sewn the button placket. Um, just to give you an overview of what's gonna happen now, you can see we have these notches at the top. So we're gonna fold the button placket behind at this folding notch here. So it's gonna fold behind and it's gonna have this little extra extension past there so that when you turn it over to the front, like you don't see that. Um, like you don't see any of the button plaque and it's completely hidden. Um, just going to the back now. When we turn it over, obviously we don't want this raw edge, so we want to tuck, we're going to tuck that edge under and pin stitch it down. But I'm going to take you through step by step. So this is where we're at. We have, um, sewn the button placket onto the front. I'm going to flip it over to the back. Okay, this is still the neckline here. And I'm going to press, actually firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to grade this seam. So, I shouldn't do this but I always use my clippers for this. When I grade, I don't want to grade the button placket because that's the bit that's going to kind of hold all the edges under, okay? So I'm just gonna grade this piece to the front. If you have duck bill scissors, I'm sure this would be easier, but I don't. Okay, I'll probably get a better tool for that in a sec. You, what you can do is you can grade the front fairly close to that stitching line and then one layer of the button placket like a moderate amount and then leave leave that um, other edge completely ungraded. So you're going to grade that and then press this edge over along that stitching line, so three quarters of an inch or one centimeter. So just using your stitching line as the folded edge. We're just grading to get rid, rid of some of that bulk, but I'm going to grade it, press it, and then show you what to do next. Right. I've folded that edge over. Now comes the magic, I guess. <laughs> so that's over. And remember we had that fold notch. If you look on your front pattern piece, there'll be a fold line notch. So we're gonna fold it back at that fold line. Can you see how, oops, when I fold it back, there's that little bit of extra cover um, beyond the button placket. That's good. <laughs> so, Fold it back and press it. So my tip is to get some sort of measuring tool. When you fold it at that fold notch, like give it a little measure, see how much it is. It looks like it's five millimeters. And then just fold it to like five mi millimeters all the way along. So um, press that down like that. Um, so I'm going to press that down and then come show you how we're going to sew it. Right, so I press that over. This is my neckline here. This is my placket. This is the right side here. So you can see you can't see any buttonholes on the right side, but there's like a, a flap that you can flap back. Okay, so just laying it out flat again. Some pins. So now we're just going to pin this down. It's really helpful to put it on a nice flat surface for this. So a table or something. Okay. So you'll pin along the edge there. If there's any bit that's not straight, I'm just kind of 
pinning it straight. Sometimes it's a bit hard to press it absolutely precisely. This, um, this linen that I used for the button placket isn't behaving quite as nicely <laughs> as the cotton lawn for the fashion fabric, but that's okay. I probably, maybe I should have chosen a different interfacing, but whatever, we'll survive. Right, so I'm just going to edge stitch this down all the way down. So I'm going to edge stitch it and I'll come back and I'll just show you how we're going to do the other side. If you've been watching any of these other sew alongs, you've probably realized by now that I get very confused between like the North American terms for things and the Australian terms for things. Anyway, um, so when I say edge, edge stitch or pin stitch, it's the same thing. So I increased my stitch length a little bit to three um, and I did that and I, so I pin stitch edge, edge stitched along this edge here and I actually just pivoted and just did a little bit along the neckline just to hold it all together at that point. So, this button placket is done. Um, buttonholes are still closed. We're gonna do that very, very last. So from the right side, you can see we've got a lovely hidden button placket. There's no buttonhole, like the buttonhole placket is not visible anywhere. And if we peel one side back, hello, we can see the, um, the placket there. So we need to treat the other front the same. So there's no buttonhole placket on the other side. So here's the neckline here. We're gonna fold it back one centimeter first, and then a second time at that same fold line. Okay, just like that. And then pin stitch, edge stitch down this edge. So essentially we're gonna end up with the same thing. So I'm gonna press it and sew it. And here we are. So we finished our front placket. So we've got our hidden placket here and we've got our button side here. So it's gonna overlap like this. Okay. And you won't see the buttons underneath there. They'll just be hidden underneath this flap. We're gonna set these um, fronts aside now and we're going to work on the back and the yolks. <laughs> 